right, now let's talk about how the central dogma begins with the initiation of transcription. Somehow, we have a molecule of DNA, protein machinery in the cell, ultimately RNA polymerase, is going to have to figure out where are the genes in this molecule of DNA. There may be many, there may be few, there might be none in this particular segment of DNA that I've drawn. And there are other proteins that help RNA polymerase learn or know where the genes are located. And this involves the proteins that read particular DNA sequences. In prokaryotes, there are particular sequences that are 35 nucleotides and 10 nucleotides upstream of where transcription begins. And the transcription start site when geneticists diagram transcription is usually using this right angled arrow. That is the position that's called plus one or the TSS, the transcription start site. That is where RNA polymerase, the enzyme, is going to bind the DNA molecule and start reading one of the strands, the template strand of DNA, and producing an RNA molecule as RNA polymerase is going to move down the DNA template. But that hasn't happened yet. In a prokaryote bacterium, say, there are specific DNA sequences located about 35 and 10, 10 nucleotides upstream or to the five prime direction. Geneticists use this terminology a lot, upstream meaning to the five prime direction, downstream meaning three prime. And those sequences are TTGACAT, so seven nucleotides, about 35 base pairs upstream of where a transcription is going to begin. And then TATAAT, about 10 nucleotides upstream of where RNA polymerase is going to be located. The reason that these sequences are important is because they're going to be the binding sites for a particular type of protein in prokaryotes called sigma factors. And there are a large number of sigma factors, different proteins, they're all similar to each other, but they all have slightly different binding preferences. And the sigma factor we're gonna talk about today is called sigma 70. And it's a protein that has part of its amino acid structure recognizes those two motifs or consensus sequences, these DNA sequences. It binds to those and recognize them. And what sigma factor does, it's the first molecule to bind at the initiation of transcription. When a bacterium wants to transcribe a gene that's located here, starting at plus one, the sigma factor will bind first. The second thing that happens then is that RNA polymerase is recruited. And what that means is this sigma factor has another part of its surface here that physically associates with, is attracted to, part of RNA polymerase. And so the first binding event, the sigma factor binds the DNA. The second thing that happens is that sigma factor pulls in or recruits, we call it, RNA polymerase. And sigma factor holds RNA polymerase right there where it's supposed to start transcribing a gene. I want everybody to realize that these DNA sequences, like the minus 10 sequence, T-A-T-A-A-T, are a type of sequence that are sort of a generic or an average sequence called a consensus sequence. And what that means is the way that geneticists figured out which DNA sequences a sigma factor binds to is they would take parts of DNA molecules that these proteins bind and they would look at their sequences. So for example, one sigma factor might bind this sequence and a second sigma factor might bind that sequence and a third sigma factor call them sigma one, two, three, if you like, might bind this sequence. And a fourth sigma factor might bind this sequence. 
And so scientists experimentally determine what are the nucleotide sequences that these proteins recognize. And they line them up and they take a step back and they say, well, all four of these are different sequences, but on average, is there some overall pattern in these sequences that we could say all sigma factors bind? So what you do is you look at every column and you say, well, on average, most sigma factors bind T at that position. And three out of four, A there, and three out of four, a T there, and a T there, and an A there, and a T there. So in this case, I've created a consensus sequence that is not the minus 10 cons consensus sequence, but it's close, T, A, T, T, A, T. And that's how a consensus sequence is developed. And that's what represents these two sequences here. Those are not necessarily exactly the DNA sequences that sigma factor has to bind. They're close in sequence to the sequence that any sigma factor would bind. And now let's talk really quickly about how prokaryotic transcription initiation differs from eukaryotic. So in a eukaryote, instead of sigma factor, we have proteins called general transcription factors, or GTFs, but they work very similarly to sigma factor in that there can be a molecule of DNA, and in eukaryotes, the most important general transcription factor is called TBP. It stands for Tata Binding Protein, because guess what? It recognizes the sequence TATA, and it binds there. So TBP, Tata Binding Protein. And in eukaryotes, at about minus 30, though, so where is plus one here? plus one is going to be over here somewhere, and that's where the transcription start site is. So we know that that's where we're going to have RNA polymerase located, RNA pol. That's where it's going to bind and start reading the DNA and producing an RNA transcript. About minus 30, there's a consensus sequence, TATA, and that is where the Tata binding protein binds, and it works very similarly in the sense that when it binds and recognizes that TATA sequence, it then holds RNA polymerase by a physical interaction between it and RNA polymerase, holds and positions RNA polymerase just at the right spot, and that dictates where RNA polymerase starts transcription, and that dictates which nucleotide is the plus one nucleotide, the transcription start site. 